Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Hey, um, I just thought I'd do a, uh, a quick video to pass on some information that um, has been very recently passed on to me in regards to uh, using the SI5351 to generate quadrature signals, as we're seeing up there on the oscilloscope, uh, down to frequencies below um, what seems to be out of the box, so to speak, with the library. Um, that's sort of 4.7 to 4.2 watt, or let's say less than 4 megahertz. Uh, this is now generating quite happily quadrature signals uh, down to 3 megahertz, um, which is exactly what I wanted, because uh, my interests lie that sort of 80 meters plus. Um, I'm not into 160, so, so that's just perfect. Um, and what that now means for this little uh, SDR rig down here, is I can do away with that quadrature um, signal board there that was taking uh, four times our desired frequency into a couple of flip-flops, uh, dividing that down um, by four, and at the same time producing those two 90 degrees phase shifted signals uh, for the, um, the SDR radio. Um, that's now been done directly by the SI5351 and um, seems to be working reasonably well. Uh, this whole radio here needs to be um, needs to be rebuilt. I won't have another close look at it, but uh, from a theory point of view, it was, it was certainly good at the time. Um, in fact, what I'll do just before I go and look at the code, I'll just sort of race through the frequencies, and um, like I say, it seems to work really well. So at the moment, what we're seeing up there is two quadrature signals, so uh, 90 degrees out of phase, um, and uh, that's currently sitting at 3.8 megs. Uh, if I was to drop that down to, say, 3.3, uh, 3.2, 3, so we're now down to uh, 3 megahertz, and if I go any lower at the moment, um, it, it stops, so I can't get anything lower than 3 megs. Um, haven't played around with the information that was passed on to me uh, to any any further, um, I've just sort of just found about, about this last night and wanted to pass this on today. But like I say, that's uh, 3 megs, you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and up and up it goes, so uh, it just keeps on going. Um, so that's really good. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. So what I'll do now is I'll just sort of break to the uh, the computer and just pass on what was passed on to me, and um, and we'll go from there. It seems to be uh, quite a simple way of doing it. So uh, first things first, I just want to acknowledge uh, uh, Brian Harper, MC, or say again, M1 CEM or Mike One Charlie Echo Mike. Uh, he sent an email to me saying that he had been playing around with uh, Jason Mildrum's library and had edited the header file. So this, this file here is the si5351.h file, the header file for that. And he had changed this line here, which is the si5351 phase lock loop voltage controlled oscillator minimum value. He had changed it from 600 megahertz to 380 megahertz. Now, like I say, I haven't tried going any lower than that. Um, I'm just using the value that he'd been playing around with. Um, and and like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate that in a sec, but suffice to say, um, what he passed on was editing this file. So what I've done now, I've just commented out the existing line, which had it at 600 megs, and I'm, uh, I'm just using this, this new value now. So copy the line and using a value of 380 megs. So what I've done, I've uh, I uh, fed that into the example code that comes with the particular library. This is Jason's library, and this example sketch that comes with the library is the SI5351 underscore phase um, phase code. Now, out of the box, like I say, you can't get down to the 80 meter band. But with the change to the header file, you can. Um, so I won't go through exactly how or the setup of this particular code here, but suffice to say, when you do start to output the two frequencies, at the moment he's using, or well, the example code uses clock zero and clock one, um, the two values here are the frequency that you want, and then this phase lock, this phase lock loop frequency, which is an even integer multiplication of the frequency. So in this particular case, um, that multiplication factor is 50. So 14.1 times 50 equals 705. Um, yeah, 705. So then, uh, so when 
full stop. So you have these two manual frequency um, commands and you tell it to do exactly the same thing, so frequency and then the frequency times this phase dot loop multiplication number. And then down here there's another two commands where you set the phase. For clock zero you say cl uh, phase uh, zero. And then for the second one, set phase for clock one, so the other output that's currently being used in the example code, you use 50. Um, so you don't, it's not 90 degrees, it's 50. And 50 is that, that even uh, integer multiplication number or the relationship between these two numbers there. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into now uh, why that is in terms of the, uh, the SI5351 application notes. But just, just remember that relationship between these two numbers um, is this, this value here. So um, both Brian and myself um, have been looking at some example code that uh, Miguel Bate, uh, Papa Yankee 2 Oscar Hotel, a hotel um, had put up on his website. And what he'd been playing around with, um, in fact he couldn't get below 4.7 um, mainly because I suspect he hadn't made that change to the header file um, probably didn't know about it, but what he'd been doing is a, uh, an automated way of um, figuring out what to use for that integer even multiplication number that we saw up, up top um, in the example code so he had this uh, function called even divisor where he does a, uh, a, a bit of a look up here looking at whereabouts the frequency is and then uh, depending on where it is assign uh, like I say this even integer um, multiplication number. So in this particular case for all frequencies less than 6.85 megs use 126. Between 6.85 and 9.5 megs use 88 and, and on it goes. Um, so once you've worked that out, you've got your little magical uh, frequency multiplication number, you can then go and uh, essentially use exactly the same construct as, as described in the example code that comes with the library. So here again we see the two commands, set frequency manual, our frequency of operation, in this particular case multiplied by uh, 100 ULL which is uh, described in the in the library um, the second part so comma there goes that even divisor uh, and then multiplied by our frequency and it was exactly the same that's that's the relationship we saw um, up in the example code where we had this number here was our frequency of operation um, multiplied so that's why it's 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 all sitting here in that second comma again multiplied by the 100 ULL to get into Hertz um, and then assign that to clock zero. Exactly the same command um, for the second clock. In this particular case I'm using clock two um, and that's just sort of sort of keeping the current um, what's the word? The words have sort of lost me where amateurs or hams using this particular board are sort of settling on the use of the two outermost clocks so clock zero and clock two uh, in an effort to try and uh, minimize any crosstalk between the two channels. So uh, ignoring clock what is one and just using clock zero and clock two, which is exactly what I'm doing over here. So again, um, exactly the same uh, uh, command, but just being one being assigned to clock zero and one's being assigned to clock two. Um, exactly the same as we saw in the example code that comes with the, uh, the library. Set phase for clock zero and zero and then set phase for the second clock, in this particular case clock 2, is that even divisor number. You recall in the example code it was 50, because that was the relationship between um, the frequency and the phase lock loop frequency. In our particular case, it's the number that was spat out by that function that we called um, as we came in to do our send frequency. So that gets, it, that gets uh, assigned to clock 2. And as per the library, um, reset the phase lock loop just to make sure that this phase relationship uh, is locked in and you're weighing laughing. And that's basically it. So that was the only two changes um, that I uh, made to the, um, so soft, sorry, the software in the phase lock loop. So just recapping, step one was to um, edit the uh, SI5351.h file, the header file. 
uh, change that VCO minimum value from 600 to 380 megs and then to use uh, exactly the same example code that's provided um, in the uh, in the library but just using the um, the even integer multiplication numbers or that relationship between the frequency of operation and our phase dot loop frequency using the values that Miguel um, had come up with. Um, I haven't done any research to find out if they're published in say any application notes for the SI5351. I haven't looked into that. Um, I'm just acknowledging that I'd used in this particular video um, the information that he's provided on the internet uh, and also using the uh, the ranges and frequency that he had come up with. But like I say, in this particular case, it seems to work very well. Um, his example goes right up to the, the max frequency for the um, for the SI5351, so there's a lot of values that go all the way down to 2. Um, I've truncated it at roughly 36 megahertz because I'm only interested in the, uh, the HF band, um, notionally 3 to 30 megs, so um, I haven't bothered putting the rest in. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to cover off um, at this point in time. Um, like I say, it seems to work, uh, well, it does work really well at this stage. Um, and, and like I say, when I come to rebuild this radio here, I'll have a closer look at the values. Um, for example, the uh, these two SI, say again, the NE612s, the, the oscillator that comes in needs to be between 200 and 300 millivolts peak to peak. Um, I'm just on or just slightly above um, 300 at the moment, um, so I'll look to uh, to fine tune that down track. And just using a couple of 10 nanofarad capacitors there to to couple it in. Um, oops, and one's just broken off. Hence the reason. Oh, that's back on again. Hence the reason we lost that. But anyway, that aside. Um, okay, so that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, of in, that may be of interest to people, it was certainly of interest to me, and, and, and thank you very much, Brian, for passing that on. And like I say, uh, I'll be having a much closer look at that uh, when it comes to rebuilding this radio in due course. Anyway, 73 is all, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers all.